Our today's topic of discussion is the acid fast stain. In our last lecture, we talked about the gram stain and the principle behind the gram staining. So today's topic is the acid fast stain. This acid fast stain was introduced first by the Paul Ehrlich. We have talked about different scientists in our first lecture in the general microbiology. So uh, there I have discussed about the Paul Ehrlich in detail. So Paul Ehrlich was a scientist who first introduced the acid fast stain. And this stain was later on modified by the Gilles Nielsen. As a result of which this was later on also called as the Jaden stain. And in today's time we generally call it as the Gilles Nielsen stain only. We uh, very less we less frequently use the term acid fast stain, but more frequently the Jaden uh, stain. Okay, so Jaden stain is nothing but the Gilles Nielsen stain, and it is that modified version of that acid fast stain which was developed by the Paul Ehrlich. Now coming to the procedures or the steps of the Jaden stain. So in the procedure, as I have discussed in the Gram stain, the first step is the smear preparation. So how do we prepare the smear? If you have uh, seen my video on the Gram stain, then you must know that the smear preparation includes different uh, steps. So those includes like the cleaning the glass slides and making them grease free. Then inoculating loop is made uh, sterile by red hot method and then we uh, take the one to two drop of normal saline on the slide and after that we take the specimen from that culture media by that uh, you know by that sterile uh, loop and then we mix it over that normal saline over the glass slide and we make a not too thick not too thin a smear over that glass slide okay so as the uh, smear is made there then we do the fixation so how do we fix the how do we fix the uh, is, smear over that glass light so for the fixation we have different methods like we have uh, we can do it by air drying method that is the most commonly used method for fixation of the smear over the glass lights so we uh, uh, fix the smear over the glass light by air drying okay and then we pass after it becomes air dried then we pass it over the flame two to three times so that it gets fixed to the glass slide so after the fixation the uh, the important steps begins so that includes the primary stain decolorization and the counter stain if you remember the gram stain there were four uh, reagents that we are we were using those were the primary stain then the mordant then decolorization and then the counter stain out of which the mordant is not used in the Jaden stain. Remember, the mordant is not used in the Jaden stain. In the Jaden stain, we are using only the primary stain, the decolorization, and the counter stain. So, primary stain in the case of the Jaden stain is our carbal fuchsin, that is 1% carbal fuchsin, and that also we use the steaming carbal fuchsin. How do we make the steaming carbal fuchsin? So, uh, for making the carbal fusion steaming, we first take the carbal fusion in a test tube and then we keep the test tube tilted over the flame and uh, until and unless some vapors start coming out from that test tube, we keep that uh, test tube over that flame. So, once the vapor start coming, that means it has steamed and it is called as steaming carbal fusion. So, that steaming carbal fusion is then poured over that smear uh, smear uh, on the glass slide okay and then we keep it for 10 minutes after that we wash it and then comes the next step that is decolorization so remember in gram stain after primary stain there was mordant but here in jaden stain after primary stain directly we are going for decolorization okay so in the decolorization here we are using the 20 percent h2so4 but in case of gram stain we were using either acetone or the alcohol Okay, but here we are using 20% H2SO4 and then after pouring 20% H2SO4 over that uh, smear, we keep it for one minute. Okay, we keep it for one minute and then we wash it and we repeat it. Like if we, if we have poured H2SO4 and uh, kept it for one minute, then we will wash it under running tap water. Again, we see that whether the red color is there or not over that slide. If there is excess of red color, still uh, present on that slide then again we will pour 20% H2SO4 and we'll keep it for one minute so similarly this process is repeated till the smear becomes completely colorless okay 
so we have to repeat this 20 percent h2o4 so and keeping it for one minute until and unless it becomes completely colorless the slide completely becomes colorless okay so once this slide becomes completely colorless then we use the counter stain we use the counter stain so here our counter stain is the methylene blue or the malachite green while in case of the gram stain the counter stain was safranine or the carbal fusion here the carbal fusion was the primary stain but in case of gram stain the carbal fusion was counter stain or rather safranine was the counter stain i mean both are the counter stain in case of gram stain the safranine and the carbal fusion so here but here in case of jaden stain we are using methylene blue or the malachite green as the counter stain and we put this counter stain and keep them for two minutes over there after two minutes is elapsed then we pour the dye from that slide in the basin and then we wash uh, wash this slide in the running tap water and then again we make this slide uh, air dry okay after making this slide air dry again we will examine under the oil immersion objective with 100x by putting cedar wood oil okay so we put the cedar wood oil over there and we examine it under the 100x objective lens after that after that we have to derive the inference so what is the inference there the inference is this that uh, if it is a acid fast organism that means we will see the red color bacteria okay so if there we are seeing the red color bacteria that means it is a acid fast organism but if we are seeing the blue color bacteria or the you know cells that means it is not a acid fast organism blue color means no acid fast red color means acid fast organism okay so then we have the principle what is the principle behind the jaden stain the principle behind the jaden stain is nothing but the mycolic acid in the cell wall just remember that the mycolic acid is the responsive responsible substance for this jaden stain to occur and how can you say that which uh, that some organism is more uh, acid fast than some other organism for that we have to see the um, the you know the concentration of the h2so4 required for decolorization suppose if organism a if organism a is requiring 20% h2so4 for its decolorization and if another organism b is requiring only 10% h2so4 for its decolorization that means we can say that organism a is more acid fast than organism b so by looking at the concentration of h2so4 required for decolorization we can say that uh, one organism is more acid fast than uh, relative to some other organism or less acid fast relative to some other organism okay now coming to some of the examples of the acid fast organism so what was the principle the principle is the mycolic acid remember that the principle is the mycolic acid in the cell wall and now coming to the examples of the acid fast organism so what are the examples of the acid fast at least you should remember these four examples there are a large number of organisms who are acid fast but at least at least you, you should remember these four names uh, of the acid fast organisms so those are the mycobacterium tuberculosis which is 20 percent h2so4 acid fast then mycobacterium lipri which requires 5 percent h2so4 then the nocardia that requires 1 percent h2so4 and the bacterial spores that requires 0.25 to 0.5 percent h2so4 so at least these four names should be remembered now coming to the vast number of organisms who are acid fast so this is all the example of the uh, different organisms who are acid fast let's see one by one so the example of the acid fast organisms include the genus mycobacteria so in the genus mycobacteria all the microorganisms are acid fast and other than mycobacteria some other acid fast organisms are also there that we will see okay so in the genus my first let's see the genus mycobacteria so in the genus mycobacteria we have in the genus mycobacteria we have mycobacterium tuberculosis complex that includes all the organisms who, uh, who are responsible for causing t tuberculosis okay so like mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium bovis mycobacterium microti africanum caprae canidae pinnipedi so these are all the uh, micro mycobacterial organisms which are responsible for tb in some or the other way now coming to the 
other my other organisms which are belonging to the genus mycobacteria those are the non tubercular mycobacteria i have made a separate lecture over this ntm non tubercular mycobacteria in my tuberculosis series so this includes the four classes for classification that is the photochromogens the scotochromogens the non chromogens and the rapid growers these are all the acid fast these are all acid fast then we have also the saprophytic mycobacteria like mycobacterium smegmatis and mycobacterium flei these are also the acid fast then we have the weakly acid fast myco mycobacteria like mycobacterium lepri which is 5% h2so4 acid fast now coming to the other organisms here some of the examples are very important from exam point of view you should remember for your mcq point of view i mean i mean from mcq point of view some of the examples are important from this part so you should remember them i will note uh, i will point them out from this list you should not remember this all you, if you can you can remember but it is not possible to remember all these names along with the percentage of h2so4 required for the acid fastness of that particular organism so just remember uh, what i will tell you so in the bacteria nocardia species is acid fast that is 0.5% h2so4 this is important you should remember this then actinomycetes is also acid fast and some species of corin bacterium and uh, along with legionella micrididae is also acid fast okay so these these are not important to remember you just remember the nocardia bacteria is acid fast other than that the among the parasites we have the oocytes of cryptosporidium parvum and the isospora belli and the cyclospora species these are all 1% h2so4 again this is important you should remember this okay and then the eggs of tinea saginata is also 1% h2so4 you should remember this also plus booklets of echinococcus are also 1% h2so4 acid fast you should remember this also then among others we have the bacterial spores you should remember this also the bacterial spore is also 0.25 to 5% h2so4 acid fast and some and in others we also have the spermatic head that is also 1% h2so4 positive i know you will remember this for your lifetime i don't know what is the reason behind that but this should be in your mind somewhere the spermatic head is acid fast positive 1% h2 with 1% h2so4 okay so these are all the examples of the acid fast microorganisms among this this nocardia is to be remembered this oocyte of cryptosporidium parvum isospora belli and the cyclospora species should be remembered the eggs of the tinea saginata should be remembered and the hooklets of echinococcus should be remembered as a acid fast organisms okay and the mycobacterium is already acid fast that is for all the species of the genus mycobacteria okay so this is all about the jaden staining we have this procedure this procedure should be at your tips this is sometimes asked in uh, vivas also and may be uh, asked as a theory question as well because nowadays there is trend to ask the practical questions i mean practical laboratory questions in the theory exams so this thing trend is going uh, is rising very rapidly so this may be uh, expected as a question as a theory question in your university exams okay so this is all about the jaden stain let's see we will see the uh, culture media in our uh, next lecture